So what is going on guys, I'm Gabriel Aguiar, currently working on a game called Rabbit's Tale, links below for more. And today we are going to see how to create the level up effect. Super useful for your characters whenever they are evolving. We are going to use VFX Graph and Shader Graph, how to time this right and how to create a glow. So, without further ado, let's jump right into this, and as usual, this whole project is available on my patrons page, links below. And before we start, just make sure that in Package Manager, you have installed Visual Effect Graph and Shader Graph, and then in Edit, in Preference, you have, in Visual Effects, Experimental Operators slash Blocks Turn On. Right, so we are going to start by creating the Visual Effect Graph, with a right click in a folder. I'm going to rename this to VFX Graph underscore level up tutorial. And we can simply drag and drop it to our scene. And press the edit button to open this up. So for this level up effect, we are going to apply particles to this character. The way we do it is by using a position skin and mesh block. We are going to need a skidded mesh information, a property, so let's create one. Connect it here, and then... And then we need to use a set position. So, so you can tell VFX Graph the transform, where is the transform of our character, in this case the bones. But we need a transform position block. As you can see we have the input for the transform which is going to be the bones, once again. So let's create a transform property for that and connect it right here. And for the position, well, we can use the git attribute position, which represents the position of each particle. Connect it like this and then to the set position. And if you save this, for example, this character comes with two skin and rash mandrins, one for the joints and another one for the surface. For the body, the head, the arms and the legs, for example. I'm going to use that one, so I'm going to drag and drop it, this skin and mesh render, to the VFX graph. For the transform, we cannot drag and drop it, but what we can do instead is use a VFX property binder. In this plus sign, we are going to say that we are going to bind the transform. The name of the property is transform. It should be the same as this property right here. And the target, well, it's going to be the bones. In this case, the root of the bones. Drag and drop it, it becomes green. And by the way, don't forget to select your character and turn on read and write option right here in the import settings. And then press apply. And as soon as I stop this and then press play, you may not see it because the particles are way too big, but they are indeed spawning at the surface of the character. Which is great, if you want to learn more about this, I made a tutorial a while back, links below, by the way, or up here in the screen. So our next step now is to improve this a little bit. For example, let's increase the capacity to 1000 or even more bounds, we can set it to manual. And we want a single burst instead up here in the spawn of 30 particles, for example. As you can see, they are spawning exactly from the character. These are going to be a few quick adjustments. For example, let's double the velocity of the Y axis. And down here, what we can do is let's select the default particle for the main texture and control the size with a set size, for example. You can say it's random in the inspector if you select the set size between 0.1 and 0.01, .01, for example. We just need to say that the set size of our life is multiply instead of overwriting any previous value. And then we can say that the curve goes from big to small, for example. And now we get these little particles coming out of the character. Great. Let's add some color to this, for example, with a set color. And then create a property, particles color, for example. And we can say that this is going to be a bright orange. We can increase the intensity, so it glows. Oh, this set color of life, we actually need to set it to multiply. The composition and the alpha composition. 
And once we do it, here we go, we have some very bright particles coming out of the character. Anyway, our next step now in this case is to play these particles along with the level up animation of this character. As you can see, I have an animator up here and this animator only has an idle and the power up state. And it only goes to the power up state when the power up property is triggered. Nothing much, nothing special. On this character I also have a power up test script. On this script, what we have is something super basic. We have two variables, one for the animator and the other one for the visual effect. In this case, the level up. By the way, I'm using up here this library so we can have access to the visual effect graph scripting options. I have a boolean to know if it is leveling up or not. And the only thing I'm checking is if there is an animator, if we have pushed the fire button and if it isn't leveling up. Then we trigger the property of the animator, the power up property. We check if there is a VFX graph. If there is, then we play simply the VFX graph. That's how simple it is. We trigger the power up animation and we play the VFX graph. This is attached to my character. I have already assigned the animator. Now we just need to assign, drag and drop our VFX graph that we just created. And if we press play, if I press the fire button, Whenever he is leveling up, there's some particles coming out, or at least he should, because we need a delay, as you can see, and it's very simple to use a delay. Let's, for example, go to the VFX graph. If we select the spawn block, we have this loop and delay options in the inspector. What we want to do is go to the delay mode and say before loop. How much time we want to delay? Well, let's create a property for that, a float. 0.6 in my and 0.6 in my case so it matches with the animation. Save it and if I fire this up as you can see now every time he levels up some particles come out. That's a great step. We can spice this up for example we can make our character glow. It's a very interesting technique and very simple but with a few limitations. Let's with right click create a blank shader graph or Elite Shader Graph. I'm going to rename this to Glow Tutorial. Double click to open it up and I'm going to say the target in the Graph Inspector is Universal. I'm going to turn on Allow Material Override so you can control these options in the Inspector. I'm going to say it's transparent and that's it. Now we only need a Fresnel node and the color property. Let's say the color property is HDR with a white color as default. And we can multiply these two together and then connect to the emission. And that's it. If you want, you can create a float to control the Fresnel power. I'm going to set it to 2.5. It controls the thickness, the radius of the Fresnel. You can save this shader. Then with right click, we can create a material out of this shader. And this is the quickest solution, there's other solutions, but for example, we can select our character, the skin and mesh renderer more specifically, and in the materials option, we can add another slot, drag and drop the material we just created, as you can see, it's already taking effect, the Fresnel, and in here, we can choose whatever color we want. For example, we can say it's going to be like this, but since we are going to animate this, because we want this to match with the animation, right? Well, we are going to leave the intensity close to minus 10 or minus 5. As long as we don't see the glow, that's fine. Now, here's a little trick that you can do. So we are going to open the animation window. I have the character selected. And what I did to control the animation is open this. And with Ctrl D, I duplicated this animation. As you can see, it comes out of the model, of the 3D model. And this is the animation I'm using. I'm going to delete the one that I created now because I already did this. So this is the animation I'm using. And this is the animation I have assigned to the power up state. And in this animation down here, I have already animated the... Let me select the character. I have already animated the glowing material, as you can see. 
The only thing I did is press this red button so it starts recording. In the beginning it's going to be with a very low intensity, as long as it isn't visible, minus 10 for example, or even more. And as it gets closer to the climax of this animation, I increase the intensity of the color. I hold on to that intensity for a few seconds and then I switch it off by going all the way to negative values of the intensity so, it, so we don't see the glow. As you can see in the curves, the curves are much easier to understand what's happening. There's only one drawback, you cannot choose different colors because this is art code, let's say, in the animation. But I'm sure you will find a better solution. This was a quick, very quick solution. So you can animate the color of the material of the glow. And now the cool thing is that when you press the fire button, we get this cool level up animation, kinda. Very nice, very sweet. Now it's all a matter of spicing this up. So for example, we can copy this particle system, Ctrl C, Ctrl V. We are going to create some particles that goes towards the character. We are not going to need the skin and mesh or the set position. We can remove it. And in terms of speed, we also don't need this block. For now, let's create a set sphere, position sphere. So the particles start all around our character. Let's increase the radius. As you can see, it's small and it's at the feet at the bottom of the character to 3.5 and push this by a value of 1 in the y axis. So it's centered with the character. And then for the velocity, we are going to use a set velocity from direction and speed. Spherical. Exactly. We also need to offset this in the y axis, the center. And it's going to be random, the velocity between minus 10 and minus 20. And in this case, we want for a brief time to have particles going towards the characters. So we are going to use a constant spawn rate instead of a single burst. With around 200 particles, as you can see, there's a lot of particles going on. And in this case, we also don't need delay. What we really need is to control the duration of this particle system. So in the inspector, let's say the loop count and the loop duration are constant. And we can even use this delay, but we need to subtract a small value like 0 0.1 or 0 0.15 so it stops spawning particles before the climax. And as you may have noticed, the particles go through the character, so we can fix it in the update particle by using a kill sphere. Anytime a particle touches this sphere, it will die. We also need to offset this in Y and then decrease the radius to 0 0.3, for example. And as you can see now, every time the particles go towards the character, they die whenever they touch this sphere. Now let's stretch these particles with a set scale, for example. We want to say it's 1 in the X and 4 in the Y. But now, as you can see, they are not going towards the character. That's a very easy fix. In the Orient block, we can say it's a long velocity. Exactly like this, looking good. If we test this out quickly, as you can see now, we have a much more interesting anticipation before the climax. It's all a matter of adding details to this now. For example, we could add a simple bright flash whenever he levels up, whenever the climax is reached. Let's copy this particle system, for example, Ctrl C, Ctrl V. We only need one particle in the single burst, we don't need velocity. Short lifetime 0 0.15, 0 0.2. We don't need the skin and mesh, but we need the set position block. Let's offset this by a value of 1, so it's centered with the character. You could create a property for that to control in the inspector, by the way. And then for the size, we want to use something big, like 4 and 5. And the color is a little bit too bright, so let's multiply it with a smaller value like 0 0.1. And as you can see now, we get a bright flash whenever we reach the climax. We can turn on use soft particles so it becomes softer whenever it touches geometry and that's pretty much it if we test this out you have now created an awesome level up very simple but quite punchy and catchy from here you can create a bunch of different type of level up effects but at least now you know how to set that up and how to use a glow for your characters so that's it guys 
This whole project is available on my Patreon page with all of these variants and with many more assets as well, links below in case you are interested. I want to take this moment to appreciate each patron and as usual a quick shout out goes to the top tier patrons which are 3D Sorcery, Adrian Briadrisky, Elshant Carvalho, Austin Schneider, Aviat Tobali, Brandon Olive, Cloudy, Kruby Dubidu, Daniel Mrazek, Desmond Tang, Diego Marques, Duitran, Edward Chai, Frank Stryker, Kills Walter, Goblin Plague, Guilherme Trindade, Yon Julin, John Nix, KC Miller, Kenan Anselm, Little Tsai, Maxim, Mark Anum, Mateus Bragança, Mograf Tech, Nat Sims, Oitsk, Pradeep Sen, Quentin Atstat, Radioactive Bullfrog, Ramez Altabaz, Revenant Games, Sergio Oliveira, Tuan Tran, Barry Suta, Will Use, Will Polion, and Ingo Daz. Really appreciate your support guys throughout the last months, you guys are awesome, and you guys rock. I hope you have enjoyed this video, and to anyone who watched this, I hope to see you in the next one. Thanks, bye.